Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Champion Battles, the series where I feature top VGC players and play exhibition best of three matches against them. Today we have none other than Francesco Pardini, who has been an incredible player for very many years in VGC. He also won the 2011 and 2015, uh, he won national championships in both of those years, and Francesco got top 8 at Worlds back in 2011. Uh, he's also a really big content creator over on YouTube and Twitch, so if you're interested, go check him out. I've linked his Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube all in the description below. He's a really, really great guy. We've been able to, you know, we've known each other for quite a while now, and I'm really excited to be able to battle him, and hopefully we'll be able to do more content together in the future. His channel is growing very rapidly as well, and his content is primarily in Italian, so if you know Italian, then... Yeah, you'll definitely be able to understand everything he does, but even if not, he's a very, very good battler, and he features a lot of different cool teams, so uh, there's always some stuff that you can see from, you know, top players, and uh, he has very, very high-level gameplay, so yeah, uh, we're really excited to get into it. I am just going to be using the Lapras team that we've been featuring. It looks like he's going to be using the, uh, uh, he had a, I, want, I was going to say Crawdon, a, a Kingler team that he's been trying out, so I kind of wanted to take this as an opportunity to also see where my team has weaknesses, so I can fix those weaknesses, because I like this Lapras team a lot, but I think the Dusclops right here slot can definitely be replaced. I am pretty scared because he does have a Tyranitar, which I think is one of the bigger threats to my team, so we'll see how things go, but either way, excited to do this best of three, and go check out Francesco. If you guys enjoy the series, please share your support by leaving a like, and uh, let me know who you want to see next on the series. Okay, um, with my fear is, against, like, this kind of team composition, is always just Tyranitar and the Exodrill. So I think I have to lead accordingly for that. Like, I could just go... Uh, Raichu isn't great here because I don't have the Focus Ash. I've got my own Excadrill, which could be pretty useful. Like, if I go Excadrill in DD. Kind of tempted to do that for game one, honestly. Um, kind of see what, wanna see what mode he goes for. Could get a Swords Dance off. Um, the thing with us X girl and DD is I can just Swords Dance turn one basically. So I'm gonna go X girl and DD. My Lapras honestly doesn't seem terrible here. And honestly, Rhyperior is kind of tempting. It does a lot of damage, especially with Life Orb. So actually trying a different mode this time, but I think. If there's a uh, time to do it, it's against a really good player. And ultimately, I hope to see the Kingler. That would be really, really cool. Uh, I know he's been playing with the Kingler team, so maybe we'll actually try it out after this episode goes live. Because, uh, like I said, Francesco uses a lot of cool teams. He's uh, always streaming on YouTube and Twitch as well. So, once again, go check him out. Uh, I'll link in the description below. It's going to be Incineroar Tyranitar. Okay, uh, this isn't terrible. I mean, we do get Exodrill out. And with Psychic Terrain, he can't go for a Fake Out. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I could just go for, like, Follow Me Swords Dance turn one. It's actually kind of what I'm leaning towards right now. Um. Like, it's a pretty safe play. Could also actually just, like, Dynamax Excadrill and, like, Snipe Incineroar. Uh, like, we could go Helping Hand Max Quake into Incineroar. But I think I'd rather Swords Dance here. I could see him switching out the Incineroar out into Excadrill, though, and Tyranitar uh, going for, like, a Crunch on DD. The main problem with uh, the mode I brought is that I don't really have speed control right now. But I think I am going to go for a Follow Me in Swords Dance turn 1. Yeah. Uh, actually, I guess the problem with this is if Tyranitar does Dynamax, and it outspeeds the Incineroar, you could just go for Max Darkness on DD and knock out Excadrill. So because of that, I actually feel the pressure to just knock out Incineroar immediately with a uh, Dynamax turn 1 and a Max Quake. Yeah. He might switch out. He could actually very easily switch the Incineroar out into Togekiss, which also concerns me. So, I don't feel like I had a super safe play here to make because I don't know how the speeds of the Tyranitar and the Incineroar interact right now. Uh, if we can knock out Incineroar, I mean, that is one of the most uh, offensive threats to my Excadrill out of the way. He's going to stay in, though, which is good. So we should get a KO here. Unless he's, like, max HP, max defense. I don't know how well Incineroar's can take max quakes. But as much as I wanted a Sword Stance here, I don't think I could have afforded to. Uh, I, I will say, I think this team does have a Tyranitar weakness. So I think I need to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to beat that specifically. Uh, one of the edits I had with this team did have Conkelder on it. So maybe we could just swap out, like, one of Dusclops and Rapier for Conkelder. Uh, he is just going to commit the Dynamax immediately, turn one. Yeah, okay. So we'll trade Dynamax is here. Um... But I am intimidated, which is obviously the downside, and there's the threat of him having the Excadrill in the back. Uh, that being said, uh, Tyranitar Dynamaxing isn't the end of the world. 
So, yeah. I'm expecting like Incinera to have gone for a Parting Shot here, but maybe it just went for Flare Blitz, like I said. Uh, could go for Max Darkness into DD and just the Flare Blitz. So I'll get the Helping Hand Max Quake off at least. Um, I would have loved to target down the Tyranitar there, but... Oh, that doesn't KO. Wow. That's really impressive. Okay, good to know that. I wasn't sure about that calc, but now I do. Okay, so we'll have to make some adjustments going into game two, probably. Uh, we'll also see who's faster between the two here, though. The Tyranitar was faster, yeah, okay, as I expected. So, unfortunately, that will get a clean knockout on TDD. I'm guessing it's just going for Flare Blitz, which will do a ton of damage to us, too. Might have gone for Parting Shot, though, like I said. But I think you have the Flare Blitz to cover the Swords Dance option. But he did Parting Shot, so we actually could have gone for Follow Me Swords Dance turn one, and that actually would have worked out decently. But the problem is, I think his... Uh, his extra draw probably just comes out right now, assuming assuming it's Sand Rush. So, yeah. Uh, one of the main weaknesses Lapras has is definitely against Tyranitar. I'm trying to think. I mean, maybe we could go with the Trick Room mode next game. Togekiss comes out, though. Okay. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if it had some, like, Yawn. I think we could go out into Rhyperia right now. Yeah, obviously I don't want to activate a weakness policy. Uh, so here we could protect Rhyperior and Max Steel Spike the Togekiss. Yeah, I guess even if I went for Sword Stance, it would have just negated uh, Extra Drill's attack. So getting damage off there is actually probably better. Like I can see Togekiss switching back out. Um. I think I will just attack with Rhyperior here. I'm just going to go for a Rock Slide and a Max Steel Spike into the Togekiss. I can't target Tyranitar right now because of the threat of Weakness Policy. So unfortunately, no Kingler coming out, but I do think his best choice is to Dynamax of Tyranitar, and I think he ga uh, came up with a really good lead as well. Uh, Togekiss just follow me, so okay, that's fine. Uh, that's actually better to see because it basically negates the attack, and we'll probably KO it this turn. I, I don't think Tyranitar knocks us out. With the max knuckle onto Rhyperior. He also might be afraid of activating a weakness policy there. Uh, Life Orb Rock Slide should still knock out Togekiss. And once Dynamax is over, like, I think Excadrill should, I mean, shouldn't have as much of a problem against this Tyranitar. Uh, there's the max knuckle, yep. Into what is going to be Excadrill. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's good. So I'm glad I didn't protect the Rhyperior there. Uh, definitely makes this game a little closer, but... Uh, the fear is if he does have Sand Rush Excadrill in the back, which I think he probably does, I'm still in a pretty tough spot. Um, we knock out the Togekiss. But if you've got Sand Rush, yeah, you can just bring it out right now and then go for a uh, target onto Excadrill. Although, with the defense boost, I'm not sure that KOs, actually. Um, this is a point where... Oh, it's actually Rotom, so Excadrill isn't out. That's a big deal. Hmm. Uh, but Rotom obviously threatens Rhyperior immensely just with the Leaf Storm. Okay, how do we win this? We're at minus two right now with Excadrill. Uh, we could Max Quake to get a special defense boost, and maybe after the boost we actually survive. Let's see, Emily turns a Sander up. There's still three. I want to Max Quake the Rotom. And, like, Fire Punch it? Then we knock out Rotom. I don't know how fast the Tyranitar is relative to me. He might double up on an Excadrill. Um, yeah, I think I'm actually going to double up onto Rotom here. With Max Quick and Fire Punch. He knows I'm uh, Life Orb now, though. No Protect, okay, which is good. So this is Mold Breaker, Excadrill. Max Quick probably does around 50%-ish or so. Just under. Fire Punch should KO that if we don't get knocked out on Rhyperior right now. I considered, considered protecting Rhyperior there, too. Gonna go for Leaf Storm. Is gonna connect. Let's see if that KOs us. Oh, it does get the KO. I was thinking maybe we could survive after the special defense boost. But that might be Life Orb Rotom. Let's see if it is. It is. Okay. Yeah. Well, that will do it for us. Uh, we'll survive here. We could still win with Rock Slide Flinches, I think. But that will probably secure the game. Yeah, I was thinking if it's a bulky Rotom, it's not KOing the Rhyperior there. Uh, now we know it's Life Orb too, though. So what we could have gone for was, like, uh, protect the Rhyperior. Because Rhyperior wins against the Incineroar and Tyranitar, I think, in the late game. I want to do that calc there. 
Because I have a lot of special defense investment, and Sandstorm is up, and we got the max quick boost. I don't know if it was a roll or a guaranteed KO. Okay. Um, I think a single flinch can still... No, I guess... Let's see. I mean, we're also at minus two attack, which is part of the problem, so we don't do very much damage. Yeah, I think we just Hydro Pump Tyranitar and Rock Slide. Because I don't think High Horsepower knocks out Rotom at minus two, given how little the Max Quick did. Yeah, the Incineroar getting that Parting Shard off was huge. I also want to know the calc on that. And uh, I haven't played against too many Incineroars with Excadrill specifically, so I don't know if that's a damage roll or if, we, if maybe it's just max HP, max defense, and that just survives 100% of the time. We did have the Helping Hand boost as well. So, two big survivals, in the, or one big survival in the Incineroar, because that allowed it to get the parting shot off, which reduced my damage up significantly, and then two, the, uh, yeah, Rotom switches out, that makes sense. Okay, I mean, if we get a flinch on Tyranitar here, that could be huge. So, let's see. Because I think there's still another turn of terrain. Uh, we won't knock out the Incineroar, but that's fine. Rock Slide comes out. Let's see. Can we flinch? <laughs> that's just so much, so little damage. Uh, no flinch, unfortunately. He's gonna superpower. Does this KO us? It should, right? Yeah. Alright, well played. Uh, we could have protected there as well, I guess. But I think in that opportunity, like, Rotom's not doing anything. So if we flinch the Tyranitar, uh, we actually have a good chance of winning. Yeah. That was a close one, though. It was honestly closer than I thought it would be. So, that's all good. So we know Tyranitar's moveset. Um, things I would have done differently this game. I don't know if I would have played too many things differently. Maybe protecting the Rhyperior, but once again, like I said, I don't know the calc. I didn't know the item on Rotom, and if it's a bulky Rotom, then I think that play is actually pretty good. Because then you don't KO us. We can swap Exedrill out and back in. It should win 2v1 against Incineroar Tyranitar. Maybe we'll go with the Trick Room mode this next game. I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, I'll just Rock Slide again. Uh, I guess theoretically we could rock slide flinch and KO everything, but look how little damage we do right now <laughs> after the minus three attack. Yeah, uh, it's a good game. Uh, that was a fun one, honestly. Like uh, the fact he didn't have Excadrill, I think gave me more of a fighting chance. But uh, the Incineroar hanging on. I want to do the calc after the game, but not right now during the set. Um, yeah, I want to calc Incineroar surviving Max Quake from um, Helping Hand, Excadrill. I mean, the Helping Hand negated the Intimidate basically. Uh, and then I also want to calc the Leaf Storm into Rhyperior, uh, because we did have the Special Defense Boost and Sandstorm. Uh, both of those I'm curious about. Um, like, maybe it's a roll onto the Incineroar, maybe it's a... If, like, both of those are guaranteed survival slash KO, respectively, though, then, yeah, I definitely should have altered my play. But without knowing those calcs super well, I think uh made sense to go for what I did. So maybe we could go the Trick Room route this game, because Rhyperior could put in a lot of work. So if I want to go with the Trick Room route, what we can do is go for Dusclops. And Indeedee. Uh, the problem is also Tyranitar outspeeds my Lapras. So in my edited version of this, I haven't uh, changed it yet, but my Lapras had more speed EV, so that could help in the matchup. Um, maybe one approach we could actually go for is Indeedee Raichu, where we get a Nuzzle off against the Tyranitar. Or actually Indeedee Lapras, and then switch out into Raichu Indeedee. Um, we could also go Raichu Excadrill. But I don't like that too much. The main problem is Tyranitar once again, right? So I think there are multiple approaches. Like, it could go NDD Dusclops. Hmm, Raichu Lapras is tempting. Basically, paralyze the Tyranitar to make it way less useful. Yeah, I think I'm gonna bring Raichu this time just because I have Nuzzle. And then I'll have Lapras Excadrill in the back because I think Excadrill can still be solid in this matchup. So I'm gonna change my approach. Um, by paralyzing it, it means that I can go first with the Lapras as well, which is a big deal. But I don't know. Maybe the Trick Room route would have been better. The problem with the Trick Room route is you can still just switch out the Incineroar, like Parting Shot, and then come back out for Intimidate. So the fact that it's able to survive with just a sliver of HP from Helping Hand Max Quick is unfortunate. I thought that was surely going to be a knockout, so I'm going to do that calc after this game. Like, it, it survived with a fair amount too, so I'm thinking he's like max HP, max defense, which makes sense specifically to survive Max Quick from uh, opposing Excadrills. I know some Incineroars like to invest in speed so that you can get the parting shot off. Yeah. Um, I think the Trick Room mode is just like a little volatile here, which once again highlights this team's weakness to Tyranitar. Uh, mainly because like Lapras is really good against most things, but not Tyranitar. Oops, sorry, let's Discord open. Should close that. He's gonna go with the same lead, okay. 
Um, so I get to go for the nuzzle play that I wanted to go for. But the question is, you know, what do I do with NDD? Because I'm kind of inclined to just switch out immediately. I can't psychic either of these. Uh, the reason I even went with this to begin with was so I just get the psychic train up. So you can't fake out the Raichu. Let's see. Um, I'm leaning towards Nuzzle Tyranitar. And uh, man, there's really no option here for me. I, I can Psychic. Uh, psychic doesn't really provide any value. I don't want to give up my Sash. Like Lapras and Exedra are obviously my two main sweepers here, right? So thinking Nuzzle Tar and <laughs> good helping hand to just for added damage. What does he go for here? There's no point in heal pulsing because I'm going to be faster anyway. And I think he probably goes for max darkness onto NDD. So I think I will just nuzzle. And... I kind of want to... I, I don't want to switch NDD out. That's the main thing. Like, I brought this specifically to paralyze Tyranitar with the Incineroar out. It's kind of in an awkward spot. I guess helping hand just for chip, chip damage. The other three moves don't do anything. Good switch out by him, though. That's a really good play. So I think this is me tunnel visualing a little bit on the nuzzle. It's not the end of the world for us. Um, yeah, I guess psychicking that slot is better. It's got snarl too. Oh, okay, this ND is gonna be the. Or sorry, this incinero is gonna be the death of me. <laughs> um, that was a really good switch. Okay. Yeah, psychicking the Rotom slot there is a little better, I think. Um, This does give us an opportunity to potentially get Excadrill out, though. Like, what we could do is Volt Switch into Incineroar and uh, follow me. Because then this allows Excadrill to get a Sword Stance off, basically. My concern is that he just has the um, his Excadrill in the back this time as an adjustment. As opposed to Togekiss. I think I will Volt Switch the Incineroar and follow me here. Yeah. Maybe follow me was kind of a useless play though. Uh, I, I think I still need a cover uh, for whatever I want to switch in. I actually might want to bring in the uh, Lapras. Uh, reason being is because then I can Gigantamax it and get my uh, screens up basically. That was a really good turn one switch by him though. I just discounted Rotom switching in immediately. Okay. He's not going to be going for an electric type attack here, right? I mean, he could make the read that I'm switching out. Uh, Lapras or Excadrill? I think I might actually go out into Excadrill first and try to not, like, force the Incineroar out by not Dynamaxing. Because we're not intimidated right now. He's got Dark Pulse. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense for Life Orb. We should survive that. Uh, we take that pretty well, actually. Okay, not bad. And Flare Blitz. Okay, yeah. That's why we went for Follow Me. Okay. Well, now this is interesting, right? Because what we could do is Gigantamax Lapras and just High Horsepower Incineroar. Um, we could also just go back out into Raichu and, like... I honestly want to, like, fake out Swords Dance. But I think I actually like the idea of bringing out Lapras here more. Because screens would be really good in this matchup, right? Um, okay, I mean, I could high horsepower Incineroar. Um, which would knock it out, but I have to worry about the switch in. Could also Dynamax Exedrill. If I bring out Raichu, we know his full moveset on Rotom, assuming Nasty Plot or Protect on the last one. Alright, I'm gonna go out on a Lapras here. The other question is, do we high horsepower? Because, like, Incineroar here probably wants to switch out, right? Um, like I want a Gigantamax Lapras and set up screens. I could make a prediction here, expecting him to switch out Incineroar, Swords Dance Excadrill, and Gigantamax, G-Max Resonance into Rotom. I kind of like that. The alternative is just a high horsepower Incineroar, but like I said, I could really see that switching out. 
This is kind of risky because if I just stay in, like I could just eat up a Flare Blitz. Um, I could also Dynamax here. I would switch out the Incineroar here. So I'm going to Sword Stance and G-Mag. I'm kind of behind, so I kind of want to make a big play right now. Okay, good. Let's see if it's Togekiss or Excadrill. It is Togekiss once again, so I mean, this puts our Excadrill in a potentially decent spot. Let's see if he Dynamaxes Rotom, actually. Yeah, he does. Does that KO us? I don't think it should, right? But if it does, we're in trouble. But the main thing is we will get a Sword Stance off with um, Excadrill this time around. That's why I didn't want to Dynamax it. Um, I think Lapras could actually be better here. But man, that was a really good turn one play by Francesco. Like if I went for a Psychic in that slot, this game could have been really different. So yeah, that like I didn't know, I didn't consider the Trend for a switch out option, and because I didn't have a better play to go with any D, Psychic is actually the better play. Just like he can slow Tyranitar slot. Because uh, if I paralyze the Tyranitar, then I get what I want. So it's not like Psychicking and doing no damage really affects us negatively here. It's a fun set though, for sure. I'm really enjoying this. I think I could have definitely played a little bit better, but I mean it highlights how good of a player Francesco is. Alright, so we get Sword Stance off. Extra Draw speeds everything on the opposing team too, which is a really big deal. I'm gonna go for max overgrowth. Alright, let's see if this KO. I mean, it might be going to extra draw actually. It does! Okay, nice! So Lapras gets to set up this time. Um Okay. Alright, I guess the question is how how much does Rock Slide do against both of these guys? Uh, and also, does G-Max Resonance KO Rotom? I don't think so. We're max HP, uh, max special attack, but I don't think they should get the knockout. Which is why that earlier Psychic could have helped, but- Oh, that KOs! <laughs> okay, we're in business. Wasn't a crit either. Nice, 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 nice. And so now we can actually even activate Lapras's weakness policy. And the main thing is that we've gotten rid of the main threat to Lapras. So, that's big. Uh, and we've gotten a Sword Stance off, obviously, which is huge. And screens are up. So I feel like we're actually in a pretty good spot right now. I think the adjustment Francesco makes, though, in this best of three, we haven't won this, so let's not get ahead of ourselves, but um, is potentially bringing his Excadrill, which I'm honestly kind of surprised hasn't come out yet. But it might also be Mold Breaker. That being said, even if you are Mold Breaker, at least you Speed Tiny. So Incineroar is going to come out. Yeah, this is uh, actually a really good position for us right now. Yeah, we're... Let's see. Um, the downside is he can't go for a Fake Out right now. They don't have Protect. So if I'm fearful of the fake out, it actually might be better to, as much as I hate it, switch out Excadrill into Raichu. Um, I guess the question is, I mean, fake out probably doesn't KO with the screens up, but then Togekiss probably just goes for an attack onto me. Um, oh, whoa, whoa. So we definitely don't want to run. Yeah, I think I'm going to switch out, because Excadrill is still actually really good in this late game. And I'll go for a... I'm thinking Max Resonance into Togekiss. Actually, Max Lightning does... Uh, wait, Max Resonance is what? 120 with Stab. So that's 180. Yeah, Resonance is better because of Stab. Um, so I'm going to Resonance. Sorry, that's a phone call there. Uh, resonance into Togekiss. And switch out. Yeah. And then what we can do is hopefully that'll put it in Volt Switch KO range. And then we can... Uh, oh, he didn't Fake Out. Okay. Nice play. Yeah, I figured uh, you have to fake out there, but if we just a uh, high horsepower, we probably just would have won the game there instantly. Because uh, we know the Togekiss is Babiri Berry, so it's obviously not something crazy like Choice Scarf. Okay. That was a really nice play. This is going to be a close finish. Uh, I think Volt Switch should knock out the Togekiss in that range. What I'm fearful is activating a weakness policy from the opposing end right now. I guess if we Volt Switch, we also probably sack the Excadrill. I don't think you Rock Slide here because you you have to follow me here, right? So I think I Volt Switch. Um, I don't want to Max Geyser and set up Weather. Okay, I'm definitely Volt Switching Togekiss. He could protect that. But then does Tyranitar knock out Raichu? That's what I'm worried about. If he has Protect on Togekiss. That was a really nice play last turn. Um, expecting to switch out. Like, he totally called me on that. Because if you if you don't, what I could do is obviously self... 
You know what's kind of a cool play, actually? I want to self volt switch into Lapras. Because if Togekiss follow me's, then we just KO you. If you don't, then we activate weakness policy. And then Max Geyser probably knocks out Tyranitar. So I think this covers every option. And he has Protect. Okay, yeah. Unless Tyranitar KOs us. Oh, that was a pretty cool play, actually. I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> Unless this doesn't knock out Tyranitar, it might not. Um, We can't get flinched, though. Superpower shouldn't KO us. Rockside shouldn't KO us. It's still going to be a close finish, but... Yeah, uh, ended up reading the Protect on Togekiss, so... Let's see. Okay. He's gonna go for Crunch into the Raichu slot. Yep, okay, that makes sense. Uh, self Brick Brick actually might have been better there, but it didn't cover every option like I mentioned. And Self Volt Switch covers everything he could have gone for. Uh, Max Geyser picks up the KO. Wow, nice. We got Lapras going in this game. This is a really fun set. Um, that was a cool play though. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy I came up with that. Um, so Lapras is up, we still have a couple turns of screens, and we can actually just, yeah, I mean, we have the fake out advantage against the Incineroar, so there's nothing stopping us from going for fake out onto Incineroar and just, um, freeze dry onto Togekiss, I think. So yeah, Dynamaxing Lapras was actually huge for us in this game. The main reason was because, I, I mean, the, the big turn this game was when he went for the max overgrowth into Excadrill, because I think he was probably expecting me to Dynamax with the Excadrill. So the fact is we were able to avoid any damage onto Lapras. So yeah, now we just fake out into Incineroar and Freeze Dry. And Grassy Train's healing us every turn too, which is nice. Um, the one thing I'm worried about is getting flinched from Togekiss. But even if we do this turn, the following turn we can just Volt Switch for a KO anyway. But it's just Dazzling Gleam. Okay, we should survive. Yeah, look at that bulk. That's why I really wanted to get screens up. Mainly because I feel like normal Exodrill can be pretty good in this matchup as well. So I gotta think about how I want to play this third game. But regardless of how it goes, I think it's cool that uh, we were able to make some adjustments. And I definitely expect Francesco to make some adjustments this time around. Like, I think he probably doesn't Dynamax the Rotom. Uh, he probably brings in the Excadrill, is my guess. Unfortunately, I don't think Kingler will come out in this matchup. Um, but I'll just go for Nuzzle here. And Hydro Pump. I could go with the Trick Room mode once again, but I don't know. I don't know if I like that too much. I mean, Dynamax Rhyperior does have a really good matchup against everything he's got, but it's like a single Intimidate against Rhyperior just really shuts it down pretty hard. Like, I think the main thing I learned from this is that Incineroar causes me problems, and Tyranitar causes me problems. And he has both of those. <laughs> um, Alright, game three, let's see. What do I want to do differently? Going into team preview... I mean, if he leads Incineroar Tyranitar again... Like, the Excadrill in UD lead, I went with ter that last game, didn't really work out too well. Um, because of the fact that we can just get KO'd and eat up a parting shot. Maybe Night- I mean, Raichu in UD doesn't seem too bad. The, the problem is if Excadrill just comes out. Especially if it Dynamaxes. That's what I'm worried about. You could go, like, T-Tar Excadrill. So, I mean... I really kind of want to go the Trick Room route this game. But then we're giving up our fundamental core, which was so good for us, right? Um, to Trick Room or not to Trick Room? Kind of want to go for it. I'm not going to lie. Especially because I expect the Excadrill adjustment from his end. So I think I will go for it. In UD, Dust Clops. We try to set up Trick Room and then try to sweep with right here. here. With, uh, if I'm not Dynamaxing Lapras, then it doesn't seem very good here. With Excadrill and Rhyperior. Because th the thing here is we were able to win that last game. Like, it, it shows you the power of Dynamax Lapras, but I think he's going to bring harder counters to it this time around. Um, I mean, I guess we could have actually gone Raichu Lapras in turn one. What I could have done was fake out the Incineroar. But the thing is, if I go with Raichu Lapras and he goes Tyranitar Excadrill, I think I literally just lose turn one. Alright, so Francesco uh, ended up timing out <laughs> in the, the uh, third game we were originally doing, but uh, wanted to be fair to him and let him go with the actual leads he wanted to go with. So 
just gonna mix up things a little bit and so what i was thinking was basically going with the uh trick room route um yeah we want to go with the trick room route and the goal is to actually uh sweep through with the right period this time around um, but we still want Exedrill in the back because it can outspeed the majority of the team and normal Exedrill can put in some work. So we're just going to go with the same combination that I decided to in the last game. We'll see how things play out. Um, so given that he was planning on the same lead, it would be Incineroar Tyranitar. So yeah, the thing with Incineroar Tyranitar is if I'm expecting that lead a third time around, I could just go with Raichu Lapras. Like I said, double protect turn one and not Dynamax Lapras specifically to potentially take a Max Rock Fall into that slot. And then what I can do the following turn is Nuzzle Max Geyser. Uh, although I don't know how much I like that. I, I think we actually probably want to target down the Incineroar slot, but the thing is we want to set up screens. Like, last game we were just able to find a very peculiar position where Lapras was able to set up, but I guess Raichu Indity actually could have worked out fine here as well, because he doesn't really have much counterplay to the turn 1 um, Nuzzle and Psychic until Tyranitar. You can protect Tyranitar, I guess, Incineroar can Parting Shot. Um, actually, that's probably the play. You Parting Shot, and you go out into Togekiss, uh, and then you can redirect the Nuzzles away. So, I feel like what I was expecting in that last game was for him to Dynamax Tyranitar, and we were able to bait out the Rotom Dynamax, but this summer around I think Tyranitar should Dynamax, which is part of the reason why I'm going with the Rhyperior mode. So we'll see how things go. Um, yeah. So I think I just clicked Trick Room here. Oh, actually, I kind of wish I brought Lapras now. I think Lapras under Trick Room would have actually worked out perfectly fine, too. We didn't need a Tunnel Vision on Rhyperior. Hmm. Let's see, then. Kind of stuck going with Rhyperior. Um, okay. I think we just trick room and follow me turn one. Yeah. No Dynamax, good play. That's actually an excellent play. Oh, he's going for a flinch. <laughs> oh, please. Okay, nice, nice. Well done on his end. I like that play a lot. Uh, let's see if he gets the turn one flinch. That's really scary. He doesn't get the flinch. Okay. That's actually a really big deal because that means now we can pain split and actually do a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna pain split. I really should have brought Lapras this game, yeah. I'm gonna pain split and follow me. Oh, we have heal pulse. Ah. But then we just heal back. Oh, well, no. The way Heal Pulse would work is if NDD survives the turn. So I think I Pain Split the uh, Tyranitar and Heal Pulse the Dusclops. Yeah. Because NDD is the uh, slowest Pokemon on the field right now, given that Trick Room is up. So I was expecting just like a Dynamax Parting Shot, but a really nice play. Okay, he's going to Protect. That's actually really smart. Let's see. If it's a Lariat going into NDD deal, that's fine. Actually, in a parting shot into NDD. Okay. So you can see how Francesco's playing this smart. He's not giving me a free switch into my Trick Room Sweepers, basically. So if I had Lapras, what I would have probably wanted have done was switch out NDD into Lapras. And now I'm actually going to Heal Pulse myself, which actually might not be in my favor. Yeah. He might just be content clicking Rock Slide more. Um, so we've got a passive start to this game for sure. Okay. We're looking for the free switch and into Rhyperior, basically. I should have brought Lapras, though. I'm really mad at myself for not bringing it. It would have been really good. Because once Trick Room goes up, we guarantee screens up, so you can't knock me out with a max rock fall. Um, I'm going to Nightshade, and... I don't think you knock out... Like, he probably doesn't want to knock out Indeedee. He might click Rock Slide. What do you do? Rock Slide Yawn? I'm still going to follow me here, because Dusclops is really good for us, um, especially with the ability to Nightshade and Pain Split. No Will-O-Wisp for us here, though, which is not great. If I, yeah, if I brought Lapras turn one, or if I brought, brought Lapras in this game, like, I would have been inclined to switch out Indeedee into Lapras last turn and self brick break, but I guess we still eat up a parting shot. Um, 
Yeah. But then we have, we're under, but then who do you bring out, right? Because then it's Lapras. Alright, no Dynamax once again. I really like his decision to not Dynamax with Tyranitar. I think that's smart. He's gonna follow me as well. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if he just clicks Rock Slide here with Tyranitar. But, yeah, because he's basically denying me the free switching, which is really smart. Yeah, that's super smart. He's stalling out this Trick Room incredibly well. Um, I'm actually shocking, so my Dust Clubs doesn't have min speed, because when I was breeding it, I got kind of lazy. But it's still under speed right here, which is good. Because now might be the time to actually switch out. Uh, there's only two turns of Trick Room, though, which is my problem. But I actually want to conserve Unity, potentially. I mean, I kind of want to... There's a lot of options to go for here. Um, leaning towards Nightshade and actually Heal Pulse again. Uh, I could see Tyranitar protecting here. So I guess Nightshade, the Togekiss, and Heal Pulse. He's going to stall out this first Trick Room uh, really well. So that was very well effective, uh, very well managed. He's actually going to finally Dynamax. Ooh. Okay. Well, that does mean we have the Dynamax advantage. Okay. I guess here by Togekiss you have the support. This will be interesting though because you can only knock out- Well, I guess you could just Dazzling Gleam Max Darkness here, right? Uh, but he's gonna go for Follow Me. So only one Pokemon's going down this turn. Okay. Really, really effectively done though. You can see how a smart per uh, player basically doesn't allow people to get a free Trick Room up. He's gonna go for Max Knuckle. Okay, into Indidium, presuming? Yeah, I mean obviously. Um... Is there any value to Excadrill if we stall out the Trick Room? Sorry, not the Trick Room. The, the problem now is like Max Darkness will destroy us, right? I don't know if Nightshade knocks out Togekiss. I think it falls just short, which sucks. So maybe we Dynamax Excadrill. I needed to bring Lapras in this game. Um, I haven't gone with the Lapras mode with Trick Room, so that was just me not being very familiar with it. And it cost me. That's okay. Live and learn. Yeah, I think we Nightshade, Togekiss. I wouldn't be surprised if he just double protects here. I mean, you shouldn't protect Tyranitar. I guess Rock Slide knocks out Togekiss anyway, right? So why not just Pain Split Tyranitar and Rock Slide? That seems fine. It's all to Excadrill now to win this, I think. But the problem is that we don't get a free Sword Stance off with NDD having fainted. So uh, ultimately, Francesco managed Trick Room incredibly well in this game. And my mistake was uh, Trick Room was the right approach, but I think Lapras over Excadrill would have been better. Or even Rhyperior. The problem with Rhyperior is that it doesn't threaten Tyranitar too much, especially with Intimidate, whereas Lapras doesn't have to care about Intimidates as much. Okay, so we had a DC, and it took us 30 minutes to recreate the scenario, but I think we're finally good. Dusclops and Rapierius positions are switched, but otherwise we're all good here. So, back in where we are, one turn of Sand left, one turn of Trick Room, and one turn of Psychic Terrain. So, I don't think it's looking too great here, to be honest, right now, because I think he can just go for a Follow Me, and I don't think Nightshade knocks out Togekiss, unfortunately. So, I think our play here is to go for Rock Slide. Well, the main thing that we'll have to try to do to win this game is have the Dynamax advantage with the, um, the Excadrill that we have in the back. But I guess we could still Nightshade Tyranitar here, forcing the Follow Me from Togekiss. I don't think that KOs Togekiss from this range, but I'm not going to Dynamax, um, because I think we need a Dynamax Excadrill probably to win this one. Uh, but Francesco basically played this really well because he stalled out my Trick Room, I think, really effectively. And by not bringing Lapras, I didn't put on pressure, and yeah, it survives just with the Sliver. And we miss Rock Slide. Oh my. <laughs> uh, well, I think we were probably losing this game anyway, but that definitely doesn't help. I assume Togekiss goes down here, but the thing is, we need any damage we can get on Tyranitar. So that's a little frustrating. Um, the thing is, Sand Sandstorm actually subsides, so it does matter, because. Uh, you can redirect attacks away now. Okay. Yeah, that actually really blows, but oh well. Um, he has one more turn of Dynamax. 
so. Um, the main problem here is that I'm just bait right now for the Incineroar. I guess the question is who do you target with... Like, I think you just sack Togekiss here and get the free switch and into Incineroar. So, I'm leaning towards Dynamaxing Excadrill, Max Steel Spiking for the defense boost. Maybe high horsepower puts Tyranitar in KO range. We would be activating a weakness policy, but yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go for that. Uh, we're gonna Dynamax, Max Steel Spike, and KO Togekiss. Definitely an unfortunate double dodge, though. But I, I, like I said, I think Francesco is already ahead. Of, I mean, it's unfortunate in the sense that because he was already ahead of the game, like we need all we can get right now to get back into it. Uh, you could just switch Togekiss out into the Incineroar here. I mean, that's my concern. But he stays in, yeah. I think you go for Follow Me and just the uh, Max Knuckle. So the main thing we have going for us right now is that we will have the Dynamax advantage for two turns. We'll basically get our defense back up as well. And by Dynam we, I think we have the Dynamax Extra Drill to give us the potential to protect slash max guard. Because we don't have uh, protect on it normally. Okay. Yep. It's going to follow me. Uh, once again, the, the problem is here that we will activate a uh, weakness policy on Tyranitar. But I think we need to uh, get damage onto it. Especially after missing that Rock Slide. Because we need to put it in KO range from um, Extra Drill. Okay. So we knock out Togekiss. The big question is also who Francesco's last Pokemon is. I think if it's Rotom. I mean, both Rotom and Excadrill, I think, probably beat us at this point. So it's not looking great. Unless he misses a Leaf Storm. Uh, mainly because this time we don't have a Sand Up. He's going to go for the Max Darkness onto Excadrill, okay. It does over half, too. Well. Um, a better play for us actually could have been to Max Guard the Excadrill and just Rock Slide there. But let's see how much high horsepower it does. Oh, that's definitely in KO range from Excadro, at least. Okay. So the question is, basically, is Rotom your last one? Um, or is it... I mean, I think you bring out Incineroar here. Uh, with the Incineroar, I mean, we can just double protect. Hmm. I actually think if you just bring out Incineroar, you can just go for Fake Out. Uh, I guess you can't Fake Out Excadrill, right? Because we're Dynamax. Yeah, never mind. So maybe it's Rotom. We can still win this, but I think it's looking a little tough, mainly because I think you have to have Rotom or Excadrill as your last one. I think I'd rather see Rotom, mainly because at least Excadrill Max Quake will do a lot of damage to that. But I'm not sure it's enough at this point. Like, what would happen was we'd have to call... Like, getting the boosts off right now could be a really big deal. But I think I would have preferred for myself to not have Dynamax last turn and just to have Rock Slided. But, yeah, after going through all the... Uh, Disconnection stuff and then just starting it off with double rock slide miss. I definitely got frazzled a little bit, so Needed to do better in that regard Okay I could see the thing here is I could see Tyranitar Because I think Rotom's probably the last one if you had extra draw, I think you would bring it out here Maybe it's not Sass extra draw. Maybe you just brought the same four Pokemon again. I mean, like, Max Steel Spike into Tyranitar is so free, right? So I could totally see Tyranitar protecting, and Incineroar just going for an attack here. I don't think Flare Blitz KOs us once we get the boost. I mean, we could go for Max Steel Spike. I guess Max Steel Spike and Tyranitar is still safe because we get the defense boost, but then I don't think High Horsepower knocks out Incineroar. We know Max Quick doesn't KO either. I guess I'll just high horsepower Incineroar and still go for the Steel Spike onto Tyranitar. We should survive Flare Blitz at plus two defense, but he's gonna... Oh, he's just gonna fake out right here. Okay. Uh, that also makes sense. I mean, we'll knock out the Tyranitar, but now you get a free switch him, presumably until the Rotom, which is in the back. I actually... Sh so, the, the, this is the thing, right? Like, in this position, I need to decide whether to Max Quake and Steel Spike. I went for the Steel Spike there, trying to get the defense boost to survive Incineroar, but Quake might have been important. Specifically so that my uh, Excadrill can survive against the Rotom. I think Rotom's probably in the back here. Yeah. Hmm. This is going to be a really close finish. Let's see. If he Leaf Storms here, though, and we Max Quake, he's going to Flare Blitz Excadrill. 
Do you flare blitz extra drill? Wow, this actually is so close. Um, we're at plus two defense. We can get to plus three, but I think we definitely quake here. Could rockfall to set up the sandstorm actually, but I think getting the special defense boost is probably better. Um, I'm actually leaning towards protecting and max quaking the Rotom. Mainly because Incineroar wins. Sorry, uh, Rhyperior wins against Incineroar 1v1. So we need as much damage off again. Like, if we crit here, I think we might win. It depends on who he targets here, too. Was that a crit? Oh, that was a crit. Wow. Oh, I mean, I, I just said it, but that definitely doesn't feel good. I don't know who he was targeting. Presumably, he was targeting Rhyperior, but if he doubled up on Excadrill, then I would have lost there, too. Ah, uh, that sucks. He did Flare Blitz, but we should survive this, right? Yeah, we would have survived it. So, what I was going for was Max Quake, and then either a Rock Slide Flinch, or a just High Horsepower, depending on how much the Max Quake would have done. I think Max Quake was going to do just over 50%, so I think we probably needed a Flinch to win this game. But, ah, uh, that feels... I, 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 that really sucks. Um, I think Francesco played this game better than me, and I the Trick Room route didn't really go super well with me. Would have come down, yeah, I mean, if you double up onto Extra Girl, I mean, I guess Dark Pulse doesn't KO us there, so you'd have to, I think you always leave Storm into Rhyperior there, so then the question is what happens the following turn, because then I think I'm pretty much relying on the flinch to win this one, so, uh, I think I needed some RNG, I mean, I did get the double Rock Slide miss, but I think the crit obviously matters more, where that, like, sealed up the game for sure, so, it doesn't feel great winning like that, because I think this was a really good set, and, you know, it was pretty clean of RNG up until now, but, uh, yeah, that Incinera is really bul bulky, so I need to do that, Kalk, um, yeah, it sucks winning that way. I think what I was going for, like I said, was Max Quake. Uh, if you get the crit, like, we just went out right. And even if we don't, then, uh, like, a Rock Slide Flinch can seal it up for us the following turn as well. Because um, I think after... It, after mm, I don't know how much Max Quake is doing there against uh, Rotom. So I want to do the calcs afterwards to see how relevant all this RNG was. I think the, the crit was obviously very relevant, but... I want to see how much damage I could have potentially been in range for, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like this was a game where like game one, he definitely outplayed me. Game two, I, I made one really cool play that I think allowed me to win. And then game three, I think he pro he should have won this, honestly. But uh, you know, that is Pokemon sometimes. And I do feel like I went for my best uh, probability play. And uh, yeah, I mean, of course I double missed that Rock Slide as well, which could have changed the outcome um, because it would have gotten more damage off. Obviously knocked out Togekiss as well. So uh, good game to Francesco. But yeah, I mean, that last game just, I don't feel great about, uh, you know, RNG is RNG, but uh, I, I like that was a really fun set, and it just sucks that it's the way it ended. But uh, overall, like I think you guys can see how good of a player he was. Um, I was honestly making expecting him to make some adjustments, and he didn't end up making those. So in the end, like if I just went for maybe what I had gone with previously, we actually would have been good. So I'm actually calculating how much Max Quake at minus one does, um, and then how much another Max Quake does. I think he would have won that one. That like I'm pretty sure. He would have that like I needed some RNG to get out of that one, either a crit or maybe a rock slide flinch for sure. Um, so I'm just quickly calculating. Assuming he has no bulk, um, Max Quake. I mean, yeah, Max Quake's definitely not. Yeah, okay. Let's say let's say he has no bulk. If he has no bulk at all, which could be the case, then minus one Max Quake does like 53 to 62. And that high horsepower, we we like we could have gotten it just from max quake plus um max quake plus high horsepower if we get a max roll on the uh, max quake. Actually, yeah, it comes out of how much bulk he has. So based off this, we do fifty three to sixty two with max quake for minus one. Oh, this is saying he's bold too. I think it, it obviously matters, but what I mean, it wasn't like a guaranteed win for him because then what the following turn would come down to is some mind games. Um, no, actually, never mind. I still think it's guaranteed for him because then you can just protect Rotom unless you don't have protect on it and you have nasty plot instead. Because then what you do is you just protect and then go for a uh, flare blitz. So in order to counteract that, I think I have to go for the rock slide flinch onto Incineroar. So I think I still need some RNG to win that. Uh, either a rock, a crit, rock slide flinch, or he misses leaf storm onto Rotom. But uh, in the end, like the odds are in his favor. I think like the odds of me getting any of those are still pretty slim. So uh, definitely doesn't feel great. But overall, I think he played the set really, really well and. 
uh, deserve to win this one. But at the end of the day, that's Pokemon, and you know you gotta look for the plays that you can make to potentially win the game. So guys, go check out Francesco. He's linked in the description below. I've linked his Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube all down there. A good game to him. He is a phenomenal content creator, such a good guy. And uh, yeah, it took us like 30 minutes to recreate that, so I want to apologize to him because it was just kind of a, a pain for both of us. Um, but in the end, we got it done, and overall, that was a really fun set. So yeah, hopefully we can get some cleaner games on Champion Battles because I definitely had my fair share of RNG against Francesco, and uh, I think Aaron was our last opponent as well. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please share support by leaving a like, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, peace.